Hello, good morning dear children. Today we are going to start the fourth chapter, The Bull. The story, Bull. This story is written by the author Hector Hugh Munro. He is also known by the name Saki. Let us know more about the author. He was a British writer of short stories. He has written many memorable stories. Children, do you know the difference between story and a novel? Okay, if given in the book, let us read it out. A short story is a piece of fiction that is shorter than a novel. Very simple. Now in this story bull, the speaker throws light on basic human emotions such as pride and jealousy. See in our daily life, we sometimes feel pr proud of ourselves and sometimes we are jealous of our friends. Isn't it? So let me ask you, have you ever felt jealous of your friends or siblings? Yes, you must have. Think over it and try to know the reasons why you were jealous at that time and just try to write it down in a sheet of paper. You may even pause the video to do this activity and then keep your points ready. I hope you all have done. Let's proceed with the story. In the story, we will come across three main characters. The bull, whose name is Clover Fairy, the two brothers, one among them is Tom Yorkfield and the other is Lawrence. So let us know who these three characters are, who is Tom Yorkfield, what he is doing and what does Lawrence do. So Tom Yorkfield had always disliked his half-brother very first sentence is about the dislike between the two brothers. We don't know why. Let us explore. There was no particular reason to dislike him for. He was just a blood relation with whom Tom had no single taste or interest in common and with whom at the same time he had no occasion for quarrel. So there seems to be no particular reason why they dislike each other. Maybe because they don't have any common interest. Okay, let's proceed with the chapter. Let us know more about Lawrence. Lawrence had left the farm early in life and had lived for few years on a small sum of money left to him by his mother. He had taken up paintings as a profession and was reported to be doing fairly well at it well enough at any rate to keep body and soul together. So here we find Lawrence is a painter and is able to live his, uh, earn his livelihood very easily. He is specialized in painting animals and he was successful in finding a certain number of people to buy his pictures. Good. So Lawrence is a very good painter and is also know how to do marketing, he is able to find people to whom he can sell his paintings. Now let us know about Tom and what he thinks about Lawrence. Tom felt a sense of superiority by comparing his position with that of his half-brother. Lawrence was an artist chap, just that and nothing more, though you might make it sound more important by calling him an animal painter. So we see Tom is thinking little superiority, he is thinking that he is superior and his brother is just an artist chap. What's next? Let us see about Tom. Tom was a farmer, not in a very big way, it was true, but healthy farm had been in the family for some generations and it had a good reputation for the stock raised on it. So Tom as a farmer is working on a farm named as Healthery Farm. 
and this farm has a good reputation because here he can grow the crops and other things at a good quantity in a good quantity tom had done his best with the little capital at his command to maintain and improve the standard of his small herd of cattle he had bred a bull clover fairy which was something rather better than that his immediate neighbors could show now this tells more about tom tom is also very good in managing whatever little capital he had what do you mean by capital capital means here money or the things that he has that he requires for farming so he is managing all that capital nicely and with that he has bred a bull named as clover fairy so do you want to know more about clover fairy i guess we should try to know who is clover fairy and how it looks like let's see more about clover fairy now in the very first line it is given what tom thinks about clover fairy it would not have one at an important cattle show but it was a vigorous shapely and healthy a young animal as any farmer could farmer could wish to possess this is what tom is thinking about clover fairy at the king's head on market days clover fairy was very highly spoken of it means people are praising about clover fairy and jog fields used to declare that he would not part with him for a hundred pounds so tom seems to love clover fairy a lot he is not willing to give or sell his bull just for a hundred pounds now the story has a turn let's see what's the story going towards it was with some special pleasure that tom took advantage of one of lawrence's rare visits to the farm to lead him down to the enclosure where he kept clover fairy so it once happened that lawrence visited tom's farm and tom took the advantage of that situation to show lawrence his fields he wanted to tell lawrence how well he had man maintained his farm and how he is feeling proud of himself so he took the advantage of the situation that lawrence was there in his place tom felt some of his old dislike for his half brother reviving the artist was becoming more lazy in his manner more unsuitable in the way he dressed up and he seemed to talk to tom with a sense with a air of superiority he took no heed of a flourishing potato crop or a group of fat black faced lambs that simply cried aloud for admiration so what happened here the lawrence who visited tom's farm doesn't seems to be interested in the farm also he is not even looking at or paying attention to the potato crops or the lambs which are there in his farm and these potato crops and lambs were looking so good so he seems to have pride in himself too let's see further in the story some weeks ago while on a business journey to tonton tom had been invited by his half brother to visit a studio in that town where lawrence was exhibiting one of his pictures a large canvas representing a bull standing knee deep in some marshy ground so what's happening here we see that lawrence had invited tom and where he had invited it was one of his exhibition where he was showing people his painting the canvas where he had painted a bull who is standing knee deep in some marshy ground it had been good of its kind no doubt and lawrence had 
seemed very pleased with it. So Lawrence was very pleased with the painting. The best thing I have done yet, he said over and over again and Tom had generously agreed that it was fairly lifelike. Now the man of paintings was going to be shown a real picture, a living model, a picture that represented new pose and action with every shifting minute instead of standing glued to one position between the four walls of a frame. So now Tom has an idea. He is going to show Lawrence his bull and he is telling that his bull is not like a picture with standing coit. His bull can move every minute his position is shifting and it is like a life, it is lifelike. Tom unfastened a wooden door and led him and led the way into a yard. So Tom and Lawrence together entered a yard where they are going to find Clover Fairy. He is quiet, asked the artist, as a young bull with a curly red coat came inquiringly towards them. So the clover fairy is coming towards them and there is a kind of questioning face on the bull. He is playful at times, said Tom, leaving his half-brother to wonder what the bull's idea of being playful were. Lawrence made one or two comments on the animal's appearance and asked a question or so as to his age or such like details. Then he coolly turned the talk into another channel. Do you remember the pic I showed you at Taunton? He asked. So Lawrence doesn't seem to be interested in Clover Fairy and he is trying to just make a talk by asking some simple questions about his age and details like this and then he is smartly turning the talk into some other direction. So seems like Tom is also jealous, sorry, Lawrence is also jealous of Tom. Yes, grunted Tom, a white faced bull standing in some mud. I have sold that picture, said Lawrence, with considerable satisfaction in his voice. Have you, said Tom. Glad to hear that, I am sure. Hope you are pleased with what you have got for it. I got 300 pounds for it, said Lawrence. Tom turned towards him with a slowly rising flush of anger in his face. 300 pounds. Under the most favorable market conditions that he could imagine, his alive and moving bull, Clover Fairy, would hardly fetch a hundred. Yet here was a piece of canvas painted by his half-brother selling for three times that sum. It was a cruel insult. So Tom is feeling little insulted insult because he thinks that his lifelike bull is just is not even getting hundred pounds and a picture painted on can canvas is sold for three hundred pounds. So he is now more jealous of his brother. The young farmer had means to put his relative to his right place by displaying the jewel of his positions and now the tables were turned and his valued beast was being made to look cheap and insignificant beside the price paid for a mere picture. So what is going on here? Tom had thought that he would show all his possessions, those cattle, bulls and make Lawrence jealous of him because he wanted to tell that, okay, see what I have, but now the tables are turned because when he comes to know that the picture or the canvas was sold for 300 pounds, now he is feeling more jealous. When he gave tongue to his feelings, he put matters bluntly and harshly. Now whatever he is saying because he is in anger kind of, so he is not able to, you know, kind of speak normally, there is a kind of fastness in his words. 
some soft witted fools may like to throw away 300 pounds on a bit of paintwork. I would rather have a real thing than a picture of it. So this is what Tom is boasting about. He nodded towards the young bull that was alternately staring at them with nose held high, lowering, his, lowering its thorns, horns with a half playful, half impatient shake of head. So the bull is a little impatient, he is nodding his head right and left, that is alternately, and he is impatient and is watching Tom and Lawrence what they are doing. Lawrence laughed as he found Tom's argument very amusing. Lawrence finds that the arguments put by Tom is funny and so he is laughing. It was too much. Tom made a grab at the loose collar of Lawrence's silk shirt. Lawrence was not a fighting man. The fear of physical violence threw him off his balance and thus it came to pass that Clover Fairy was overjoyed to see two humans, human beings fighting across her enclosure. So Tom could not hold himself. He grabbed the collar of Lawrence and just then what happened is that Lawrence wanted to run away from there because he is not a fighting man and he got off balance. And while doing that, while he was running away, he came in the path of bull and the bull got excited and he was overjoyed to see that two human beings are fighting in their enclosure. So what did the bull do? In a, another happy moment, means the bull is happy now, in another happy moment the bull tossed Lawrence in the air and tried to prod him in the ribs while he was still in the air. It was only the timely intervention of Tom that stopped the bull from hitting Lawrence. So it just happened fun that the bull tossed Lawrence in the air and injured him. But before he could injure him badly, Tom came in between and stopped the bull from hitting Lawrence. Of course he is a brother and no brother would like to see his brother getting hit that badly. Though they are jealous of each other, but they, are just, they do not want to kill each other. So now what happens? Tom devotedly nursed his half-brother to a complete recovery from his injuries. Now Tom is nursing his brother so that he can recover quickly. Which Now what, what was the injury? The injury consisted of nothing more serious than a dislocated shoulder, a broken rib or two. So his shoulder had got dislocated and there was also some broken ribs. After all, there was no further reason for jealousy in the young farmer's mind. Lawrence Bull might sell for 300 or for 600 but it would never toss a man in the air and hit him in the ribs. That was Clover Fairy's noteworthy achievement which could never be taken away from him. Now the Tom feels that the painting was better because the real bull can even hit a person and can cause injury but a painting may not do so. Lawrence continues to be a popular as an animal artist, but his subjects are always kittens or fawns or lambkins, never bulls. Now children, I am going to leave this question for you. Why is that Lawrence not interested in painting animals anymore? They are painting kittens or lambkins, but never bull. Why is that so? But this, I hope, you have seen and understood the story. In the beginning, the two brothers were jealous of each other and how the jealousy came to an end with an incident where the bull prods or hits the Lawrence and there we find at the last that Tom and Tom is nursing his brother 
and taking care of him and with that the jealousy came to an end. I hope you have understood the chapter. Bye and take care.